Hello, my name is Rick Loring from LMGI. Thank you for attending the Solid Edge 2020 Lunch and Learn sessions. Um, before we get started here, um, we should I should mention about the GoToWebinar panel. There's a panel on your, the right side of your screen that you can shrink down. And uh, I'd encourage you towards the bottom of that to ask questions along the way. And we can answer those as we go along since everyone is in a listen only mode. Uh, here's a quick spread of the Solid Edge 2020 portfolio. Each release of Solid Edge adds more capability, more add ons, and more core capability. We'll be going through these in this ongoing series uh, to do a deeper dive in each of these. Today's topic is reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is, was added with to Solid Edge starting in ST9 and uh, continues to, um, to add more capability. Uh, so some of the new things they've added is the ability to remesh a body. That's a big one because some of these models can be very, very large and difficult to, to maneuver, to manipulate, to work with. So there's remesh, there's model regions, there's some filling holes. I'm going to explain each of these in a demonstration, but uh, these are the big ones, is filling the holes, aligning the, the bodies on, on a coordinate system that you can use. And uh, an amazing one, I think, are the section sketches. And then the ability to just simply edit the model, make changes to it, add or remove material, and use it in downstream applications like assemblies or drawings. Uh, the first one is remesh. So when you get a model scanned, whether it's a point cloud or, or any scanned file, sometimes the models can be unyielding. It can be very big. You can miss whole sections of it. Uh, it's just not always neat and tidy. So we've included a command called remesh and this remesh gives us some uh, some pretty decent control over how the model gets remeshed uh, each of these are, are explained here what your uh, your target mesh size is what the minimum size would be the portal tolerance these are all on the ribbon really simple to use like most solid edge commands uh, you just follow the ribbon through and there's um, there's a, a separate options page that will give you even more detail. So it's pretty slick. Uh, some of the remesh uh, results are astounding. You'll see today it, it does, it definitely improves a model that we have, but in some cases you could have a scan model that looks horrible. And after doing some curvature refinement and remeshing, it looks a lot more like the real part. Uh, you can retain some sharp edges, some boundary settings. Uh, many of these are are worth experimenting with uh, to see if you can improve your your model. Uh, this is that uh, options, some of the remesh options that I mentioned. Uh, that's that's right here in the end of the uh, dialog. And um, some of these here, like you'll see a, a substantial difference between before remeshing and after remeshing and this does influence the file size by the way there's another this whole regions concept this is this is pretty interesting too especially with the the part that we prepared in that it can go through the part and determine the cyan colors are cylindrical and the magentas are spline or um, or fillets the anything yellow is a plane so it can just scan through the model look at all those triangles and actually do some pretty good model identification uh, for you to use as you move along so here's an example of you have this, this scanned you have a part that you scan and uh let's back up there a little bit part that you scan and it could be 150 megabytes in this case. And by running the remesh, we can drop it down to 20 megabytes. That's pretty uh, substantial and it definitely makes the model, you can feel it just as you move the mouse. It can uh, it could, uh, make the model much more uh, reactive. 
Uh, then there's the, we're going to talk about this in a future session, but the whole, when you do the generative, if you've messed with the generative stuff before, that makes a mesh model. And the mesh model is just triangles. And this is, this is how they often, excuse me, this is how they often come out. Uh, but you can run a remesh on a generative model and actually determine cylinders, some planar faces and such to turn it into a prismatic type shape rather than a completely organic shape. More on that a little bit later. Uh, many times too, once you bring in your, your scanned model, or even if you import models from the internet, regular solid edge, regular step files, parasolid, SAT, et cetera, oftentimes they're out in space somewhere that are not nice and lined up with an X, Y, or Z axis. So they've given us an align command where we can put this thing in your component into a uh, reasonable uh, location. So X, Y, and Z uh, match with the top front and side views. Uh, here's an example. Before alignment, parts all crooked, crazy. We can put a box around it. There's an automatic box. You can then select um, which face you want to line up with a particular axis, and uh, we can drop that, match the uh, UCS right from uh, the solid edge session. So I'll show you that with a part, and it makes it a lot easier not only to work on it when you're when you're modeling. But if you were to drag it into an assembly to line it up with other parts, uh, the top, front, and side uh, make much more sense. So it creates this bounding box, best fit, picture axis, and you let it um, you let it reposition. Uh, here's one I love. This is just amazing to me. Uh, we can actually touch a scanned-in model and drop a number of planes or sections right through it. So wherever there's a plane, when a plane intersects the model, it will create geometry where the plane intersects. And that geometry is usable and editable. It's not just there for a visual uh, cue. You can actually use that geometry to then model more parts or measure uh, that kind of thing. Here's an example where we have a plane that goes right through this scanned part, and um, it actually, you can convert that into just an intersection curve or uh, into lines and arcs versus a spline. I'll show you that in a second. Here's another example, a nice long scanned in image, but you can get all these multiple section views and even re-loft after that just loft via those sections so you have an actual sound solid model and then use the scan data to reference or just to compare. Uh, so pretty useful. So let's let's take a closer look here in Solid Edge. Uh, what I'm going to do first here is open up a model. I'm going to open up this model and it's a pretty big one it's about 75 megabytes 76 megabytes or so when i open it it does take a second to open uh as it does with with any larger models because there are a lot of a lot of faces or i refer to as a bag of triangles that we open up and you can even feel it you can feel it on your mouse as i try to rotate this thing around it gets kind of jumpy kind of uh, you know it seems heavy so what we'll do is the reverse engineering tab has a command called remesh. And we're going to remesh this. And you just select the part. And there it does do, and uh, there's an algorithm in here that does by default the best it can. But uh, through some experimentation, I found that if I put four millimeter in the target size and two millimeter here for the uh, minimum and a 0.7. I found I got pretty good results with um, some more settings, by the way, I forgot about these. There's some settings that you can adjust, but I got pretty good results uh, with the size mesh for what I'm doing. And uh, so we'll let this run for a second. This is on my Surface Book. Let's take a little bit. But uh, so we get a finer mesh, it's more uniform, and um, I can just feel on the mouse, it's, it rotates much faster. So let's save this as a new name. 
uh, I don't want to overwrite the one that I have. We'll just call this uh, I don't know, Rev um, Rev B. I suppose Rev B sounds good. Hold on, there we go. And what I want to do is let's let's save as again. I just want to point out the file different file size difference. So we'll go to save as. We'll look at the original one. <clears throat> about 70 the new one's about 15 meg and the original one was about 76 meg that's a substantial difference now this thing starts to get a little more usable i did find a hole in this thing you, if you can see right through it there's a gap where the scanner did not get to so we have a fill holes command i can just hover near the part there's a little report here tells me it found one hole i'll answer okay We'll set this to curvature and answer the green check mark, and it fills in that hole. What's cool is the second it fills this in, it, it shows up here in my tree as a construction body. Now that there are no gaps in that, I can double click to activate that, uh, that construction body. You can actually right button this and uh, turn that into a solid body, which looks like it was just dipped inside some gray battleship paint, but um, but now it's a solid body. I can now go through and do an, a recognition and automatic uh, regions. So what these are, we saw in the PowerPoint briefly, there are, it looks for planar faces, it looks for uh, cylinders, uh, radii, and it color codes these. So. This does take a second to run because this is an actual uh, part that um, that we had scanned. And uh, so let's let this grind through and the results should show up in a color coded fashion. We'll answer OK just to have it finish this. And we'll uh, we'll see that the cyans are the cylinders and the um, the yellows are the planar faces and they'll select if I select if I touch one of these surfaces they will uh, select that you can just draw right on them and, uh, and and use that geometry the problem is drawing on this you know the top view the front view the side view this is just it's out in left field somewhere so I'd like to just move this whole thing into a more usable place so under the reverse engineering tab we have the align command. I'll select align and we select the part. Accept that. We'll ask for a custom bounding box. It just does its best fit around the part. I can touch that top surface and uh, put a UCS on there and touch the original UCS where I want it to go to, hit the green check mark and it grabs that whole uh, body and moves it to the new location. So now, and this, this holds true for doing drafting and assembly, if I do the top, front, right, side, Control-T, Control-F, Control-R, uh, we can see that this is a little more, uh, little more reasonably positioned. So the next step here, let's look at that, uh, the section sketches. On the section sketch, you can touch uh, you touch the part and accept it, and we can touch a plane where we want this the the planes the initial plane where we want the new planes to come from. You can type in any number you want in there with any offset, and wherever those planes intersect the part, you're getting geometry. So let's say we make th we have three planes and we'll uh, tighten this up a little bit uh, nine millimeter apart. If you touch the arrow, you can go up, down, or both ways. Uh, we'll go down, and we're, it, on the tree, you may have noticed on the left, we now have some sketches that show up. And the sketches here uh, are editable. Uh, let's take a look at this. Let's uh, maybe turn this uh, part off, and uh, just take a closer look at the sketches. Um, so I'll turn off some of the sketches. Now these sketches, because it's a scanned in image, let's touch one of these profiles. That's like a spline with a million nodes on it. If you've worked with this kind of stuff before, these are unyieldy, they're, they're unbearable. 
um, to work with, but we have a, um, a simplify command. So I can touch a sketch and it drops the nodes down substantially, making this into much more usable uh, geometry later if I want to use it to cut or as a protrusion or, or whatever. So next, let's draw a shape. Let's draw something on this model. And uh, we'll zoom in here and uh, do a, let's click right on that face. I'm going to lock to that yellow plane. And let's see if I can pick up the center of this uh, cylinder that it found. Oh, there we go, center. I'm just going to draw a circle on here. And let's now use that circle that I just drew to um, to then do, let's say, a, a cut. So I'll do the extrude command. I'll set this to minus and select that. Uh, right button select. And let's drop this down and go right through the part. And uh, we now have an, an edit on this part. And uh, so let's go back into, oops, let me back up here to solid edge. Bear with me just a second. Uh, let's go back into one of these parts that I had. So I put the a cut out there, but I actually did a little bit more. I took some of those other profiles here. And uh, for instance, right here, that was that spline that we did. And I made a cutout on, on that. I did a couple more holes. And actually, I was doing the ID. It was a little bit out of concentricity from the scan model, but I just wanted to see what diameter it might take to clean up that ID, if I were going to machine this or or just take some other dimension. So I, I cut the, um, the outside with a, a profile. I cut the inside. And it doesn't need to stay these colors. Uh, we can just do view and do a part painter and uh, we can select uh, the entire part and uh, color this a little bit differently. Actually, you can do any one of the, the faces here to indicate, let's say, um, a face that was going to be machined, uh, that you can, you can illustrate this. You can then drag these into uh, drawings or assemblies, take measurements. You can do a number of things because it is a solid edge model. Um, let's see if I back into the, so this is just our first look at uh, solid edge uh, reverse engineering messing with the STL imported uh, geometry. Uh, we're going to carry this into some more details later with uh, as this, how this relates to the generative design. And um, let's go back to our PowerPoint. And let's see in here if there are any questions on this. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's one. Uh, which versions of Solid Edge contain the reverse engineering software? Uh, good question. That is in Solid Edge Classic. It delivers with it in Solid Edge Premium. It's not in uh, foundation or design and draft. Um, also, when does when is Solid Edge 2020 being released? We had that question a couple of days ago, and we weren't sure when it was going to be released until I looked yesterday and I saw the download. And uh, it is released. That's what I was running uh, today. Uh, here in um, this question mark about Solid Edge. This is the released uh, version, 2020, uh, version 104. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, feel free to drop me an email uh, at any time, or we'd love to dig into this, especially when customers have specific questions. Uh, I appreciate your time today, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you on a, a another session coming up. Thanks very much. All right. Bye.